Okay, today we're going to be talking about how to make a custom multi-view block or multi-view part that has custom um, representations or display representations. So for example, here I have a 3D block and here I have a 2D block. If I want this 2D block to um, uh, show in a plan view for my multi-view part, the, the following work show will, will show you how to do that. So um, this is this is my multi-view block or multi-view part right here. If I switch to uh, a plan view, you can see that it is bringing in my um, the symbols as I, as I would like. So the following is going to be how uh, the workflow that you will need to um, create this. And we'll also cover um, a few nuances that you may have trouble with. So for example, what I'm going to show you that the easiest way to, or the most basic way of doing this but if for example you need to have custom side views um, uh, there's a little bit more you're gonna have to do so ours is super simple because it's just the top down view that we're going to be customizing um, and so i'll walk you through the process first and then we'll come back to that so you'll want to launch content builder you always want to launch content builder and you never want to just um, click on your block um, and hit um, convert to multi-view part the reason for that being is that if you um, do it that way, you will never be able to modify that multi-view block again. It, and, and if you try to, if, if you click on it and you hit, and if, if you convert it to a multi-view part and you have it in your model, you right click on it and you hit modify multi-view part, it's going to tell you it's not in your catalog. So that's why you should always use the content builder and you can get to that. Um, here are my piping ribbon um, is where I'm going to access that at and you know, launch it however you want. Um, and I will start by saying that it's very important that you do not add any multi-view parts to the out-of-the-box catalog. Um, the reason for this is that um, you're going to lose all those multi-view parts when you migrate versions of AutoCAD. Um, so don't do it. Um, don't do it there. If you need to create a new um, catalog, you're going to you're going to type in catalog editor down here. And you should get a launch catalog editor. That's the actual name of the commands. And um, you'll get this. All you need to do to create a new catalog is do a file, new, name it what you want. Um, uh, make sure that you say the domain is a multi-view part. We'll do test for the root directory. I'm just going to do it in my downloads folder. Um, and I'm walking you through this because there are nuances associated with this. Um, now you save this and you should be good to go. However, if there is nothing in this catalog, it will never populate. Um, you'll never see it in your, in your available list of options. So what you need to do is you need to open up a, another catalog and then um, just do a copy and paste of one entity and then make your new one, uh, Make, for example, make this, this host station um, and then come back in here and delete that out and you'll be fine. Okay, and to clarify how you're going to do this, you're going to need to open up another catalog, an existing catalog. Um, so um, ideally find the location of the default one. I'll, I'll go over how, where you can find that location at um, later. This is the one that I'm going to open up for now. Um, so I, I just went up here to file open. I'm just going to select this catalog. It's going to open it and it's going to close my current one. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to find something. I'm going to do copy and then we'll come back here and we'll open up the previous one that we just made should be a .apc wow. file and you can see I've already I've already put something in there so um, uh, we will just you know, save it close it um, now to add that catalog and then and I promise we'll get to the multi-view parts here in a second um, to add that catalog to your distribution or to your current um, window of AutoCAD you'll you'll type in options and um, we'll go to file options and then you'll come over here to um, AEC, you go to, sorry, MEP catalogs. You'll expand the multi-view part and then you'll just add and you'll navigate to um, where that APC file that you just created was. So I, I already have two in here. This, this top one here is um, the uh, my, my custom one. Okay, so moving along, um, we, we've discussed why we need to use Content Builder and not to the convert, um, right click and convert. And so I've already made one of these, but we're gonna make a new one here. So. Um, this isn't an instrument, but I'm just going to place it on here for right now. So this will be a block-based multi-view part. So we'll use um, block-based. There are also um, parametric parts and stuff like that. So we will go ahead and, and do that. And we will call this um, host test three. So we are making a host station here. 
and so it's gonna it's gonna bring up a window here in a second. But first, I want to show you the um, the help from um, the documentation from Autodesk, and um, I strongly advise that you look up. I think it's this one. Um, go ahead and Google understanding multi view parts and connectors. Watch this video. Um, the um, most beneficial one will be here, and you may be able to get to this link. Okay, or not. Um, you want you want to look at to the create um, to create view blocks, and it's very important that you understand this portion right here. If you're not going to have um, AutoCAD auto generate blocks that are used for the multi view block, if you're going to generate them yourselves, you need to pay attention to your X Y Z planes and, and how you're drawing your blocks and, and those relations. So go ahead and give and give this a read. Um, additionally, it has something. Here, I'm talking about base points. Base points are very important, so we need to get that right. And I'll discuss that here in a minute. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and, and we'll put this um, the subtype. We'll put it underneath um, hose cabinet. I don't know why I'm only getting a few of these. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, so we'll use we'll use the hose cabinet as our type for layer key. I'm just going to select something real quick. Um, but you know, set up your layer key how you would like. And we don't need to select either of these. These are mainly for instruments and valves. So we will um, continue on. And then now um, we are we are into the blocks and names um, definition portion of this. This is the most important portion. Um, so we will add a part size. And um, I know the name of my 3D block is H H S X. So I'll click on that. And then you see how all these are red. Um, and so like what it's trying to do here is it's it's trying to to um, identify the block to use from a top-down view, bottom view, left, right, front, back view, um, and all that. So um, AutoCAD will generate those views for us if we use the, the generate function down here. So we'll just click on this. And um, if you hit OK, um, it will generate all those views. Um, however, I would like to give it a custom top-down view block. And so um, I've had a little bit of trouble with this portion. So um, what I'm going to tell you is going to work for you. Um, if you run into any snacks, um, just um, uh, listen to what I'm about to tell you here. So we have a display component um, of one line top view, and we also have a two line top view. And so I think I was having issues when I was just I was I was coming in here and I was I was going to the one line top and I was saying to use I said use my symbol block, and then. Um, then I would just hit OK and have it generate all the others. Um, and it seems to still be looking for this, this block called um, what it's going to generate is HSX top and, and not it was not looking for symbol instead. Um, and so if you do it wrong, you'll get an error that says you can't find this, this top view, but we'll, we'll continue on and come back to that if, if need be. And so for this two line top, I'm going to also make sure that I hit symbol here. Otherwise, we might have some errors. And you can see as I go through these, like the one line view, you can see that here it's saying the display representation that's associated with that display component is this one. Um, and as we go down to the two line, it's saying it's it's the two line rep display representation. And once we hit the 3D, it's saying that it's the model. Um, I don't think you can change any of this. Um, you might be able to you might be able to double click and assign plan to that view instead. And yeah, apparently that's how that works. Um, I'm just going to leave it how it is because it's set up correctly. And uh, we'll just double check that that's correct. Yep, we're pulling in the symbol block. And then for two line top, also pulling that in. So I'm just going to hit OK here. And I, you can see that it worked because it's bringing in my symbol block for the, for the top. Everything else has been auto generated. And so we'll just hit Next. We'll generate an image for this. If you want to add connectors, this would be the place to do that. I'm not going to cover that in this video. And then we'll just hit finish there. Okay, so now what this has done is it has created a DWG file wherever your catalog is located. So, um, for example, this is this is my catalog here. And if I open up host test three, this is how it's going to be configured. And this is also, and we're going to talk about base points here and why base points are, are so important. So when I go down to the 3D view here, you can see, and I select all of this, you can see that I have seven different block references. Um, and so it actually uses each one of these block references um, when you when you pull in that this multi-view part. Um, and when I, when I check the base points of all these, you can see that they're all going to be in that same location, which is, um, uh, I think that that's very important.
Uh, I think that if you, for example, if this had a base point that was in the middle here, um, I think it would shift. I'm very confident it would shift when you, when you switch to the top down view. Um, so this is where all that stuff is declared at. You can actually go ahead and you can actually edit this if need be. Um, typically it is faster to recreate a multi-view part than to edit each one of these blocks. Um, it is like, but for example, if I just needed to stretch, you know, if I just needed to make it, you know, that's, that's super easy to do. Um, and I think the reason why that stretch command didn't work is because I'm in a world coordinate system. Um, so we're going to run into an error here in a moment. I'm not sure why this error is popping up right now. This is something that we'll, we'll, we'll figure out and shouldn't be a problem. Um, but so we just made host test station three and I, I don't actually want to go to content builder. I want to go to equipment and I go down to my, my catalog host test station three. And this is the catalog you're going to get. And it's telling me, oh, okay, well, it's giving me that error right now because I'm in the drawing. Let's try it again. Okay, it's telling me it's missing the HSX block. That's the actual 3D block. I'm not sure why I continue to get this error. Um, and so um, I'm to, to work through that right now, what I'm doing is I've, I've literally just done copy base from zero, zero. I've been opening up the, the multi-view part. I'm not, I'm not sure why I'm getting this error, but for, the, for the purposes of this video, should be fine. I'll just paste it in there, make sure it came in the right location. Seems like it's a little bit off, so I'm just gonna um, move it. Uh, the For whatever reason, um, the grid snap point comes on when you're in here, so you just hit F9, you can turn that off, and it restricts the way that you're moving your cursor. We'll just save that. Um, and when you save it, it then puts a plot stamp on here to turn off plot stamp, use ST off. And then delete that. A lot of nuances here, apparently. Um, and then lastly, now everything will work. We'll use host test station three. Okay. Put there, put it in there like that. And then now you can see that my top down view is working just how I would like it. So that's the process that you're going to go to to um, substitute in your your custom blocks for the, for the top down view. The um, you know, side view, whatever you want. Um, now, in order to make a, let's talk about the workflows needed to create a, um, a, a front on view. Okay, so I'll just copy this uh, 3D block. And um, if I need to make a, you know, a special 2D representation of this, let's say instead of it, um, you know, what if I wanted all of this gone on my front view. You know, I'm gonna to need to custom create that. Um, and so we'll, we'll talk about um, workflows in order to get that done here. Um, the first thing you can do is use the flatten command, but I'm pretty sure the flatten command is not gonna work on this. Um, and then we can also use, um, we'll run that command. I'll see what it does here. And um, I also am bringing this up because if you get really complex geometry in from your vendors, oftentimes the uh, it won't even gen like the multi view part creation won't even generate the the, the blocks for you, um, which is obviously a pretty big issue. Hopefully, it has crash here. Um, and so, what I've had to do is create those um, views myself. Okay, so I just finished running the flatten commands. It took quite a while. The reason why I think is because um, some of these objects here are actually AEC objects um, from the from the piping tool palettes and, and things like that. Um, but now we have this. Uh, th this is now a block, and it, it's a block reference. And if we um, look at the help for the flatten command, what you'll see is that it creates it creates that that block in um, and the current viewing plane. So um, as long as you switch to you know a front view like this, it, it'll work. Um, now, for example, I've had complex geometry from vendors come in before, like let's say for a boiler, um, and I couldn't use the multi-view part generation. Um, it just it just never would work. Um, 
And then I tried to use the flat command to make the individual blocks myself. Um, that also did not work. Uh, I, I think that the flat command just never operated or, or something like that. Um, I can't remember specifically, but what I ended up having good success with was um, you want to go into a new drawing for this, otherwise it will flatten everything in the current drawing. Um, you want to use the command called um, flat shot, I believe. And so we will take our block like this, give me a 2D view, and I will use flat shot. Insert as a new block, yep. Follow these prompts here, create. And for insertion point, we will use the same one. And then it's asking me about scale factors, so I'll just right click through those. And now it has created our block here. Um, we're going to want to redefine that base point. So there's there's uh, list routines for that where you can just do a B edit on this block and redefine the base point to be in that bottom left hand corner like all the others are. Um, and then that is how you can go about and create um, your your own views uh, from from vendor blocks or or whatever, and, and, and kind of custom custom tailor them out how how you would like. And then it's it's just in that content builder dialog box and specifying it's this block for this view. So hope that helps. I'm not sure why I was having issues with the uh, the model block not coming in to to the DWG, um, but you know that's something we'll work through. And um, if you have any questions, just let me know.